to remote sensing applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we'll cover a spectral region that's just beyond what we can see in the visible spectral region, and that's called the near-infrared spectral region. So for now, go to the Nana TIFF image and add the longest spectral region we can see, which is band three, the red spectral region. And we'll label that red for the red spectral region. And then add just beyond the red spectral region, band four represents the near infrared spectral region. And we'll label that NIR for near infrared spectral region. If you remember from our last session, for the visible spectral regions of blue, green, and red, many of surfaces had the same sort of spectral response. You'll find with the near infrared spectral region, typically the spectral response can be different compared to the visible spectral region. So for example, vegetation is highly reflective in the near infrared compared to the red. So if we turn on the near infrared, you see this area that has aspen, much more highly reflective compared to the red. So here's the red where uh, photosynthetic material is absorbing in the red spectral region, and it's relatively highly reflective in the near infrared spectral region. And then likewise, if we zoom to the river, in the red spectral region, it's a turbid glacial river system. The Tanana is bright, but when we look at the near infrared spectral region, the Tanana is dark. So basically with near infrared, areas that have uh, water tend to be dark and areas that have vegetation tend to be bright. So the basis for many vegetation indices used in remote sensing is the contrast between the near infrared spectral response and the red spectral response. So vegetation is typically highly reflective or relatively highly reflective in the near infrared. And then if photosynthesis is occurring, it's relatively low reflectance in the red. So the contrast between the two would be high in the near infrared, low in the red, and it turns out there's no other surface other than vegetation that is high in the near infrared spectral response and low in the red spectral response. And we'll get into vegetation indices in a few weeks. The other thing about near infrared spectral region, it's used in color infrared photography. So for example, the Alaska High Altitude Photography Program was color infrared photography. Okay, so this is a cartoon of how color photography works with color film. It's basically a blue object reflecting highly in the blue has a minus red emulsion, minus green emulsion, and a minus blue emulsion. And basically a blue object becomes blue on color film, a green object becomes green on color film, and a red object becomes red on color film. Okay, with color infrared photography, basically we have a yellow filter that's in the lens, so the color of the lens is yellow, and that's gonna filter out um, anything in the blue spectral region. So objects that are reflecting mainly in the blue, so for example, clear water, will appear black on color infrared film. And objects that are highly reflective in the near infrared will appear red on color infrared film. And something that's reflecting highly in the red, so for example, senescent vegetation, will appear sort of a greenish color on color infrared film. Okay, so if you make a new data frame and then add from this week's data set, the raster ahap.tiff. So ahap stands for the Alaska High Altitude Photography Program. And then basically this was a color infrared photograph that was scanned on a desktop scanner. And it's of the area that's Allison Air Force Base and the Tanana River. And we can enhance the contrast by 
doing a one standard deviation contrast stretch. Okay, so with color infrared film, turbid water is going to appear this turquoise or cyan color, and clear water is going to appear black. So here's some example of clear water. It's going to appear a very dark blackish color. And vegetation, broadleaves will appear some reddish color, pinkish, dark red, depending upon how the film was exposed. And conifers will be a much darker color. So here's a black spruce stand surrounding by an aspen birch stand. And then senescent vegetation will appear sort of this color typically. And then typically most objects that appear white or bright on color film will appear white or bright on color infrared film. So for example, um, concrete or sand or clouds all appear bright on color infrared film. So color infrared film is useful because it's used in vegetation mapping typically to delineate broadleaf vegetation versus um, some sort of coniferous vegetation. There's a great contrast. So here are black spruce areas, and then here's a stringer of probably balsam poplar along the riparian area. Okay, so if you go back and activate the data frame that has your nanana raster, let's add that nanana raster containing the spectral bands. And what we want to do is we want to make this look like a color infrared photograph. So from the last time, if you remember, band three was the red spectral region and band one was the blue spectral region. So here we see a simulated um, color image. We want to simulate a color infrared image. So what we're going to do to simulate a color infrared image is we'll assign the near infrared band to the red video display. So the near infrared band will be band four. And then we'll assign the red to the green video display and then the green spectral region to the blue video display. So that's going to be four, which is the near infrared spectral region, and then three, the red spectral region controls the green video intensity, and then two controls the blue video intensity. So the near infrared spectral region controls the red video intensity. So I'll label that NIR. And then the red spectral region is going to control the green video intensity. The green spectral region, or band two, is going to control the blue video intensity. So if we zoom in, we can see even though the aspen are still low in photosynthetic activity, they're starting to senesce. They're sort of a green or a reddish color, broadleaf. And then the black spruce is sort of this off, a darker reddish color. And then once again, if we look at the Tanana, which is a turbid river, it's this cyan color. And here's a pond down by Nanana that's clear water. It's a dark blackish color. Okay, so this Nanana image is a Landsat uh, sensor image. And if you want to, you can actually have it so it will automatically display as a color image or a color infrared image whenever you add a layer. So to do that, if you go to Customize and then ArcMap Options, and then there's a tab for raster layer. So then basically you could say, okay, any time you add to this arc map document a raster that has four or more pixel values, how do you want it displayed? So here we would say, we'll use band four to control the red video intensity. We'll use band three to control the green video intensity and we'll use band two to control the video intensity for the blue. And then we could apply. So then if we added a raster to this data frame, so okay. 
So we'll just add this Nanana TIFF raster. So it by default is added as a color infrared image. And likewise, you could do the same thing. You could go to customize arc map option and we want to see it as a color image. So that would be band three, the red spectral region will control the red intensity. Band two, the green spectral region will control the green video intensity. And band one, the blue spectral region will control the blue video intensity. So then if we add nanana.tiff, and we'll turn it on, it portrays this as a true color image. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, there's a quiz question that if you answer it correctly, will lead you to the next video session.